Curious how I turn my coding skills into a $15,000 a year passive income? Stick around as I unveil the secrets behind this coding to cash transformation. Hey, this is Maros, I'm a software engineer for over 10 years now and I work as iOS developer and I also build my own apps on the side. In one of my previous videos, I was talking about my iOS app I built, Trading Tracker. In this video, I want to share and give you a deeper look into my indie app business strategy. Trading Tracker is my secondary income, and in the last 12 months, I made over $15,000 just from this app. Just to make it clear, the $15,000 is a gross income, so no taxes and other expenses are accounted for. Having said that, my only expense to run this app is the $99 a year developer account fee for Apple. Besides that, there are no other expenses. Now that I put down the numbers, let's first talk about how we can make money as software engineers. The first and most common way is, of course, to be employed as a software engineer and work a regular 9-to-5 job. Having a regular job is the safest possible option. Although, one could argue with all the layoffs in the US that happened lately, in Europe the situation is a bit different as the company cannot fire you just like that. But in general, a regular employment is the safest option. With safety comes some cost. That means you'll probably make the least amount of money as employed software engineer. The second option is to be a freelancer or contractor. There are pros and cons for everything, including being a freelancer, of course. The biggest disadvantage is the risk of not having a client or a project, not having days off or sick days. You can, however, offset these cons by asking more money. And last but certainly not least, you can make money by building your own stuff. We as software engineers have everything we need to build a profitable product. Most of us, however, don't take advantage of this power we have. I think it's safe to say that living off of your indie income is not as risky as being a freelancer. While as a freelancer you're exchanging your time for money, your indie apps are out there and they can make money even when you sleep. However, building a profitable product is very difficult. Why? It all comes down to our motivation and discipline. We all can agree that working on something without a guaranteed reward is somewhat difficult. For me personally, there is however a sweet spot of risk and reward. To mitigate the risk of not having a client or not making money off of your own product, you can do both, building your product as well as having a full-time job as an employee or a freelancer. With this approach, you don't need to make money off of your product. It can be just your little side hustle that might become something bigger eventually. The biggest question we indie developers ask ourselves is when to switch gears and go full-time indie. The answer is, I don't know. No, but really, it's only up to you, your risk tolerance, your savings, life situation and so on. One thing is clear, I hope. If you have a family, kids, a mortgage to pay for and your income is the main one in your family, please don't go full-time indie even if your product makes some money. You need much more of a safety net than just a little app making a couple thousand a month. On the other hand, if you don't have any loans, kids or other liabilities, it's much easier to make the decision and pull the trigger. Some of the indie devs switch to full-time indie even if their product makes nothing a month. And the reason for this usually is that they want to focus on their product and spend time building. And that, my friends, is in most cases total bull**** All these developers need is a proper time management to handle full-time job and side hustle. And here I am, still working full-time while building already profitable side business. What stops you from waking up at 5.30 a.m. and build your stuff until 9 a.m. when you start working? Or just skip that party on Tuesday and build the product on the evenings? I also know some successful indie developers that weren't developers when they started. And they managed to not only learn to code, but also build a very profitable business. Is it hard? Yes. But is it impossible? Probably not. The most important skill you have to focus on 
is your discipline and resilience. The mistake I see others do, including myself, is waiting for a motivation. The question here really is, what comes first, discipline or motivation? In reality, motivation won't just appear on your doorstep. It's always you and your actions that create motivation to work. So in case your excuse to not build something is the lack of motivation, let me tell you, you'll be stuck forever. So let's dive deeper into how I've been doing it for over three years with my side business. The first step to almost everything creative is idea generation. In order to build something, you have to have an idea. When it comes to selling stuff to people, your idea should solve someone else's problem for them to pay for it. The best possible scenario is to build something that solves your own problem. In my case, I was a stock market day trader and I was using an Excel document to track my trades, metrics and I was trying to build a profitable strategy based on this Excel document. But after some time, it was just too inconvenient to manually track trades here and so I decided to build an iOS app, Trading Tracker. What's probably worth noting here is that I had no intentions whatsoever to make money off of this app. My true motivation was to solve my trade tracking problem and learn something new by using some new technologies I've never used before. And so I built a very simple MVP with just two small features. To create a new trade entry and then to aggregate all of the entries and calculate some important metrics I needed to know for my trading strategy. I released the app to the App Store and it was set it and forget it kind of thing. I was using the app and not checking how many people use it. Well. After about 3 or 4 months, I was very surprised to see that the app had hundreds of downloads. And this got me thinking, are these people willing to pay for it? I then put a the price tag on the app, $2 to download it from the app store. After a couple of months, I made about $100 and I was exhilarated. It got me thinking even more about the potential this app has. This brings me to my next point. Don't spend time building more and more features until you have a proof that people would use your app. After I saw this traction, I started building more features like automatic trade import from CSV files, which is the biggest and most important features today. With this and some other features, I also introduced a paywall and bigger monetization of the app. I started selling subscriptions monthly, quarterly and annually. Keep in mind that this was all just an experiment and still is to this day. There are multiple ways how to monetize your app and it's not one size fits all kind of thing. It depends on the app you have, whether you use a subscription based model or one time payment model. Or if you offer a free trial or not. You have to try and see for yourself. So after I monetized Trading Tracker, I was very motivated to build more and more features. And this was a mistake. I built multiple features without any proof that the customers would use them. I eventually got rid of most of the features I built and started asking for feedback and reviews from the users. It didn't take long for me to make a list of features the customers actually want. The feedback is very important for me as I can scale the app based on that. With the app and revenue growing, I wanted to scale. I started thinking about marketing and what I can do to get more users. It took me just a few days to actually realize that it's not that easy to do marketing for my app. Some indie devs are very active on Twitter or X and that's their marketing strategy. And it's awesome if your app can be used by everyone, for example, habit trackers. But in my case, my target audience is US stock market traders, active traders to be more specific. While traders are active on Twitter, it's hard to build an audience of traders, especially as a beginner trader with not a lot of shareable knowledge. To be honest, I did zero marketing for a trading tracker. For most of the app's existence, it didn't even have a website. Currently. I'm working on a web version of Trading Tracker for multiple reasons. And with that, I will work on marketing after this is done. The first thing I will do is a blog where I will be posting some articles about the importance of trade tracking, strategy building and so on. 
For example, a short ebook explaining how to track trades and make some conclusions off of the metrics Trading Tracker provides would also be a good idea. What's also a good way to get some traction and leads is to offer something for free. What you also might be familiar with is an article which compares other similar services and so I can make my own article and put my app as a first place, because why not? In conclusion, marketing is all about building audience, trust and making some kind of content for your potential customers. Then it's about tracking metrics, analytics and adapting and experimenting to improve these metrics. So that's it. That's how I turned my iOS development skill into a profitable business. I hope you can take some actionable steps from this video and if you would like to know more, let me know down in the comments below. Now I want to also hear from you. Do you have your own product? What are your strategies to generate leads and increase your revenue? Let's share some tips and tricks and grow together. Also, make sure to drop a like and subscribe for more insights into the developer life. Until next time.